it's been another crazy long week, uh, but uh, I'm here. Uh, a little preface, Sabrina claims that I have a superpower uh, in that when I think of something or I sort of put out my mental feelers for something, a watch model or something, and then it has a tendency to appear. I, I don't really buy into that kind of thing, but sometimes things happen like that and, I'm, and I wonder and I shake my head. A few weeks ago, I was on a, a Facebook group and um, a watch group, and one person put up a post saying, hey, does any, what does any, everybody think about these, this particular watch? Uh, and I looked at it, and I'm like, I've never seen one of those. It's cool looking. I've, I've never seen one, never even thought about it. It was a Longines uh, Admiral Five Star Dive Watch from, from the 90s, uh, after Longines was bought by the Swatch Group. And it looked like a pretty interesting watch, and I kind of made a mental note that I would... I would, I, I'd, I'd look into them, which I completely forgot about. Then, the following week, I got a contact from somebody I've never worked with before, never spoken to the guy before once, not once, uh, as far as I can remember. Um, and he contacted me, he said, hey, I bought some stuff at an estate sale, and so I really want to talk about, I, they're not things that, that I want to keep, uh, I want to see if you'd be interested in buying them. Uh, he had a number of things, like uh, a number of like Seiko watches, like 7,005s, uh, but with a special, they were personalized uh, for the Amico company, uh, and also like a, um, an Accutron and some other stuff. And he said, and I got this, this Longines. Uh, seriously, it was one week I saw it on Facebook, never heard of the model before. The next week, somebody writes me and says, I bought this thing, I'm, I'm interested in selling it. And so I was like, Okay, and he said, well, and, and he described it to me, and he showed me a picture, and he said, well, it's basically new old stock. And he showed me pictures, and boy, if he wasn't honestly correct. I, we're going to look at it a little more closely, don't you worry, but I want to show, sort of, ah, I want to sort of show it to you. It's an interesting model. It's a Longines Admiral 5 Star. Um, these are, I, I had to learn a little bit about the, 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 the watch company at that point, and also a little bit about this model. And there's, there's not a lot for me to really go on. So if you have any information about this particular model, please let me know. But let's take a break, and uh, I want to let you look at it more closely. Because I think it's pretty neat, especially considering that it was made in the 90s, uh, and that it has a lot of the features that are popular right now. Okay, so let's pause and I'll go over there. So here it is. Um, the nice thing about Longines is that the, the person who found this actually wrote to Longines and they were able to track this watch uh, when it was actually originally sold. You can see it's got the original box. It's been in the box for a long time, you note the wear. Uh, this was sold on the 2nd of September, 1992, to uh, Baum and Company in the UK. Uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's an interesting watch. One of the reasons I wanted to make this video is because when I first got the watch, one, it was a little smaller than I had expected. For some reason, I had it in my head that I read some reports saying that these were, um, these were uh, 40 millimeters, and, and they are with the crown, but the, the case is actually 38.5. And also it has the smaller dial with, uh, with a relatively you know tight thing. So it looks, it wears a little smaller. So I was looking at this watch though, and the thing that really, there were a number of things that really sort of wowed me about it that I thought was cool. Okay, so the watch is from 1992, right? You figure the 1990s, that was when, you know, the, the gigantic watch, sort of thing really kicked off and you know we had sort of this trend for gigantic crazy baroque watch designs all the way up into the la up until just the last few years now in the last few years we started seeing a lot of the throwback watches um, a lot of the reissues the omega 300 the the radio captain cook um other you know vintage style older watches and in a size uh, below sizes below 40 millimeters you know 38 millimeters sometimes even 36 millimeters for some of these older watches some of the smaller older dive watches are coming 
you know, coming back or being reissued. Uh, you know, we have old style watches like these coming back that people seem to really be enjoying. These are all sub 40 millimeters. But this watch was made in the 90s, long before that. Another trend thing is that this watch came with this beautifully patinaed loom, um, which of course is a fashion now. Everybody's going for this tropicalized loom, but this already has it. Now, I don't know if this loom has patinaed down or what. The loom does glow, but not for terribly long. Uh, it's not tritium, it's not tritium marked. It just says Swiss made, 1992. Um, I, I think at that point, I mean, like Rolex was still using tritium. I'm not sure what this dial is, but I was just amazed that not only, so it has this throwback style loom, it's a throwback size. It has this sort of old school hand. I'm comparing it. My first thought was it reminded me of my Arley. This Arley is from the sixties and that's what it definitely reminded me of. And look at the handset. That's crazy. And then you have this, uh, this beautiful little baby, my Sigma Valmon, again a '60s, and look at the look at the dial layout. Very, very similar, very similar indeed. And again, you know, in terms of size, oh, this case back came off again. In terms of size, I mean, it's comparable to like this this Zodiac. This watch is is pretty amazing. I'm a little. There, oh, and the next thing I thought that was pretty cool, though, is so it has this sort of throwback look to it, but the movement is a modern one. It's a Cal, it's Longines Cal 633, which is actually an ETA 2824-2. Uh, it's 28.8 uh, BPH. And also, it's got, a, it's got a unidirectional bezel. It, this was actually the thing that when I first ran into this, I'm like, oh, man, that's cool. It has one of the most sweetest bezel actions. Beautiful, nice clicks, but it's with basically almost no back action. Really, really nice, solid clicking, but not like harsh. Like it feels smooth and solid and locked in and clicky all at the same time. It's really cool. Uh, it's full length, solid bracelet, which again is amazing for, you know, the mid 1990s. Um, one thing I did notice is that the finishing on the bracelet isn't like isn't a hundred percent completed. Like when you look on the side of a, a like a like a Rolex bracelet here, hang on. You look on the side of a Rolex bracelet on the non-removable links, you cannot see any of the pins whatsoever. They put the pins through, and that's the end of it. On something like well, but on this, you'll notice even though it's a solid link, which is amazing because in the 90s, a lot of times things were folded, you can actually see where there's you can actually see the ends of the pins coming through. It's not a big deal, but it's it's something to think about. Almost no marks on it at all. It's got a kind of a funky clasp, it's got a single release button here, and then it it opens up, and then it's got this like slide extensor thing to make it easier to put on, I guess. It's like, it's not a dive extension. It's, it's, it's pretty, pretty neat. But here's, here's something too that I was like, oh man, this thing really is new old stock. So here's your case back. And look at the red dot right there. Do you see that? That's a, that's a, like a little wax plastic seal that Longines put on there to show that the watch had not been opened. So this thing, it's the equivalent of almost like a case back sticker. It's, but it shows that the watch has never been opened. I don't think this has really been on a, somebody's wrist at all. It's pretty cool, but I mean, it's, this, this watch is coming on 30 years old. It absolutely needs service, but I'm kind of hesitant to even open it up because that would destroy this little red dot, which I think is really cool. Anyway, it's a very neat watch and it just, it's amazing to me that a watch model I'd never heard of showed up the next week, and especially in this condition. It's just, it's neat. I like the puffy loom. I like the puffy loom and the silver surround underneath there. Really neat. And uh, I, I, I'm a very big fan of this of this proportion. This is very much uh, with with this sort of, in the, not this plastic top of just this, this sort of concave loom pip I just think is neat. I think the watch might look a little nicer if it had a larger, if it had a larger meatball hand, whatever we want to call this, lollipop, not stoplight, 
I don't know, whatever we want to call it. I, I think this is actually more visually pleasing. Uh, and I'm also more of a fan of the old style domed crystal. But this flat crystal is, is, is very attractive. And overall, it's a very, very pretty watch. You know, like, you know, like the Rolex Submariner, it's very much a pure watch. There's like, there's nothing extra. There's nothing like, nothing extra whatsoever. Uh, it is, everything that's there is there for a reason. And I actually, I love the bezel action. The bezel action in a lot of ways feels so much better than this, this Submariner. I mean, this is pretty clean, but I know for a fact, this is just a little wire spring in there. This, I have never, I haven't looked under there. I don't know what they've got, but it feels really substantial. I'd have to bet that it's probably got a Seiko style flat leaf spring if I had to guess, but I could be wrong. I mean, I, I'm just not sure. It could be teeth underneath the rotating ring with like a with a triangle lever clicker like so, but I'm, I'm just not sure. That's pretty cool. I don't know. Should I service it or should I just leave it as is? New old stock. Isn't that beautiful? So anyway, somehow a 2000... A 2000 teens throwback watch made in the early 1990s. Pretty neat. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Pretty cool watch, huh? Neat. Neat. Okay, thank you so much.